This is how you get perfect trains in Transport Fever 2 every time. This video is going to help both new players and more experienced players conquer what's called train hierarchy, which is essential in Transport Fever 2, and we're covering it across all eras of the game and specific trains and their purpose. So let's start off by asking the question, what is train hierarchy? Well, what it is basically is just the priorities assigned to different trains on certain lines over the other lines. This is applicable to things like speed limits, platforms at stations, signals, which allows a three types of train service to operate effectively within your game of Transport Fever 2. So let's start in the 1850s, the beginning of the game. You're probably going to want to start to set up your train network, but before placing stuff down, make sure all the vehicles are enabled in your game save settings. Sandbox mode is turned on and the time is set to one quarter. This gives you enough time to do a good job of constructing your network without the stress of the constant impending redesign for new vehicles being unlocked. Okay, so you've chosen your capital C and you've built up the necessary buses in every decent sized city to get the ball rolling. Get yourself a basic station down in two or more of your biggest cities and link them up with a train service. At the beginning of the game you'll have the class V, the D13 or the six wheels unlocked. These trains at this stage are called commuter trains as they're very low speed and power so not really good enough for any kind of cargo and the route or routes these trains are going to be on stop at every single station along the way. And of course, as we go through all of the trains, make sure to check the top speed and match it with the carriages you buy for the trains along the way. So in the years between 1857 to 1863, the next round of trains unlocks the Class T, the General, the Borsig and the Class GV which is where things start to get interesting as now we've got more than one type of train hierarchy at play. It's a new category. These new types of trains are going to be called intercity which are sometimes known as express or city link trains as well. We're going to call them intercity just to keep it simple. So keeping your existing setup with your commuter trains, the class V, D13 or 6 wheels, add one of these new intercity type trains to a new route that's going to stop only at the top 50% size of cities. A good rule of thumb that I use is that intercity trains will stop once for every three stops along the commuter route. Also, make sure that the intercity service stops in the capital and the cities on the furthest extremities of the map. This will inject extra civilians into the workforce in the capital you might not necessarily have otherwise. This will also make you get plenty more money, enough to keep the company going, but bear in mind the goal of Transport Fever 2 is not to make money, it's to make the best transport network possible and grow the biggest cities. For signals between commuter and intercity trains, place signals further forward in front of commuter signals on the tracks in overtaking sections so the game will make the commuter trains wait for the intercity trains to pass. To create this, simply make a siding on both sides of the track. Add a signal on the new outside lane, then in the route for the commuter train, select the signal as a waypoint in its route. Then intercity trains will be assigned priority over the commuter trains. So with all that said, an interesting thing happens with the next round of unlocks of trains. The 280, Class 53, BR89 and the Fairly unlock through the years of 1871 up to 1874. Now the previous trains, the Class T, General, Borsig and Class GB are now downgraded to the type of commuter trains as these new trains come in and will replace them. These new trains are great for intercity routes for this time period as they have high top speeds aside from the Fairly and the BR89 which are our first specialised vehicles. With these new unlocks, it also brings with it a new type of train hierarchy we can add to our network. And that's going to be a fairly significant one, as it brings significant cargo into the game. You're probably pointing at the screen right now going, This guy's an idiot, you can do cargo from the start! And yes, well that's true, I am an idiot, you can't do the best way to do cargo from the start of the game. Very well at least, due to the lack of power from all the trains. But now we have these specialised trains, so we can do it. If you're interested in the best cargo setup that shares all cargo across the map, check this video out, but make sure to come and finish this video after. And they've already clicked away, it's just me and you now. <laughs> well, basically all you need to know about that is that there's two types of train hierarchy, shutter trains and distribution trains. A cargo yard is constructed on every extremity of the map and a distribution yard in the centre near the capital. The shunning trains are light and short trains that are frequent and stop at the industry for raw resource pickup, then they drop it off at the sorting yard and repeat. Whereas the distribution trains are powerful and long trains that pick up the goods from the sorting yards and bring them to the distribution hubs in the centre of the map. This way the distribution trains are full both ways from sorting to distribution and distribution to sorting. And all yards across the whole map are sharing resources which is really efficient. It also means that the capital city can then pick and choose from the stockpile whatever it needs to get the best growth possible and therefore grow population. Adding these two new types to the train hierarchy now means the list looks like, from top to bottom, 
distribution, intercity, commuter, and shunter. All right, now I think you got the hang of the basics, let's move on. Just remember, usually older vehicles run down to the next tier in the hierarchy when better vehicles replace them. And those vehicles from below that tier go down with it as well. So for example, if we unlocked a three slash five and set it to our intercity trains, the previous intercity trains, which let's say is a 260 mogul, would become the new commuter train, and the previous commuter train would get sent to a nice farm upstate. A bit of time has passed and it's now the roaring 1920s. At this stage of the game, you'll have lots of options to work with train-wise. And with these new options, we'll introduce the highest type of passenger train hierarchy, which is the cross-country, or sometimes referred to as the bullet train services. Around the 1920s, 100 km an hour trains first unlocked with a 10-wheeler in 1896, or even more ideal, 120 km an hour trains first seen in the EP2 in 1919 are the beginning of this new tier. The cross-country service needs to be constructed to cover just the capital city and cities on the very extremity of the map. This is going to once again bring more workers and money to the capital from the extremities that otherwise wouldn't contribute so much. These trains are only ever going to share tracks with the commuter trains when it's absolutely necessary, such as the track next to station platforms, as it needs to run on its own track wherever possible, where other trains aren't going to delay it. Now these cross-country trains must stay on time, people are paying good money for these trains, which is a good thing. If the high-speed cross-country trains are delayed, people are more likely to take a cheaper commuter train option, which won't make us anywhere near as much money, and it will cost us more in the long run, because we're paying for the upkeep of these luxury trains. Now what's interesting, we've talked about commuter and cross-country trains and tracks but we've left out intercity and that's because intercity trains don't generally have their own tracks they run on a combination of both commuter and cross-country tracks as they can go much faster than commuter but not quite as fast as cross-country so they kind of work best when they use both at different intervals a key crucial component is not just to build a new track for every type of train hierarchy there's simply no point You'd just be spending money on track maintenance when you don't even need those tracks and you'd be surprised how much traffic a mainline can handle. You only need two main lines, one for the commuter and one for the cross-country trains. So with this new train introduced, the current hierarchy is cross-country, distribution, intercity, commuter and then shunter. So just like intercity trains, the distribution trains use both types of tracks, commuter and cross-country tracks to get there on time. Just make sure they go fast enough. Now once again, more time has passed and it's the 1980s. The new cross-country speed should now be around 240 km an hour or higher, intercity 120 km an hour or higher, and commuter 100 km an hour or higher. There's plenty of options for trains you can choose, so don't worry about that. By this point, you should be having no problems with your train network, and it should all be running smoothly. As time passes, the new vehicles unlock with better stats, replace them just like previous. But now you've got your types of trains selected, you're going to struggle with dealing with traffic big time. And that's why you need to watch this video which shows you exactly what you need to do for the perfect traffic flow you need in your game.